One of the things I really wanted to see in the sequel trilogy was if they were to bring Palpatine back, that is, a young Palpatine, perhaps a younger cloned version of himself or him in a younger vessel. Full power, ready to go. However, in Legends, we did get to see Palpatine fight several times after Revenge of the Sith, in the comics, in the books, and so on, even the games. Now today I'm going to go over five times Emperor Palpatine fought someone after Episode 3, so let's get to it. Now after narrowly defeating Yoda on the floor of the Senate, it in 19 BBY, 19 years before Episode 4 A New Hope, it seemed like Emperor Palpatine's dueling days were behind him. With his newfound power and the fall of the Jedi, there weren't many threats in the galaxy that couldn't be handled by a group of Death Troopers or a well-placed Star Destroyer, not to mention the Death Star itself. So it might surprise you to find that not only did Palpatine have a fair share of fights in the years after becoming Emperor, but he even lost some. Starting in at number 5, Luke Skywalker in Dark Empire. In the Legends continuity, the fate of the Rebellion played out much differently than it does in Disney's new canon. Six years after the destruction of the second Death Star, Emperor Palpatine returned. In secret, he had resurrected himself on the mysterious Sith world of Biss, where he possessed a newly engineered clone body, and he wanted one thing, to retake his empire. He ended up dueling Luke Skywalker a few times. In their very first fight, the pair seemed equally matched. Now by this point in his journey, young Master Luke was able to deflect cannon fire from Imperial walkers and even push them around the battlefield with the Force. He was far more powerful than his father, Darth Vader, had ever been, of course, because he was was limited as Vader. But again, there's a caveat with that. It really depends which comic you're looking at and who the writer was. But even though he was greatly skilled in the Force, Palpatine was definitely stronger. Dueling in the center of the cloning laboratory, Palpatine managed to force Luke to the ground. In the very first encounter, holding his lightsaber to Luke's throat, he said, It is not your time to die. It is your time to submit. The dark side will break you. So right there, Palpatine could have killed Luke, but of course, he wanted to turn him to the dark side and make him his new apprentice. Number 4. Entire Republic Fleet. This is from Force Storm Dark Empire. Not long after Palpatine's victory over Luke in the cloning laboratory, the Emperor was forced to use his mastery in the dark side to overcome the new Republic fleet. Aboard his massive 10 mile long Star Destroyer, Emperor Palpatine had managed to capture both Luke Skywalker and Leia Organa. These were perhaps the most powerful Force users in the galaxy and the children of the man who murdered him nearly 6 years ago. Hoping to break Luke's spirit in the same way way that he manipulated Anakin Skywalker during the Clone Wars, Palpatine ordered the young Skywalker to kill his sister, but Luke refused. My ally is the Force, the Jedi said as he raised a red lightsaber to his face. Palpatine shouted in rage, and he lunged at Luke. After a brief duel, Skywalker severed Palpatine's hand and commanded the reborn Sith to surrender. But in that moment, realizing that the end was near, Palpatine did something that Siths had done for generations. He decided to tap into the dark side of the Force and cause as much damage as possible possible before he died. Summoning a massive dark side wormhole, Palpatine used it to attack the Republic fleet. Dozens of frigates and corvettes were sucked into the Force Storm, shredded into atoms. If it weren't for the massive wave of light side energy that Luke and Leia projected at Darth Sidious, Palpatine would have surely won the battle. Number 3. After Vader's Betrayal, Darth Vader Volume 3. Emperor Palpatine was suspicious of Darth Vader's intentions. After all, it was a Sith's destiny to be killed by their apprentice, but Palpatine promised himself he wouldn't just roll over and allow Vader to take his place as Emperor. If Vader truly was going to replace him, then he needed to outwit Palpatine. And unfortunately for Vader, he wasn't nearly as smart as the cunning former Senator from Naboo. In the aftermath of Darth Vader's duel with Luke Skywalker in the bottom of Cloud City, it quickly became apparent to the Emperor that Vader was up to something. After all, the black armored Sith had fairly simple orders. He was to turn Luke to the dark side or kill him. Instead, Vader allowed the boy to escape. That was a betrayal of his master's orders. But perhaps far worse, Vader was obviously biding his time, hoping to build a relationship with Luke. Whether they would defeat Palpatine and lead the Empire together or revive the Jedi, it didn't matter. The simple point was, Vader was trying to amass power for himself and Palpatine couldn't allow it. So, shortly after the Imperial invasion of Bespin, Palpatine summoned Darth Vader to a meeting. There, he ordered the Crimson guard to assault Vader. When their skills proved too inferior, Palpatine used the force to lift Vader into the air, completely destroying his 
armor and reducing him to a stump on the floor. Number two, the coup attempt on Coruscant. In the early days of the Empire, Palpatine and Vader's mistreatment of Imperial soldiers didn't go unnoticed. The disappearance or dismemberment of freshly graduated Imperial cadets was an almost daily occurrence. Unlike the clones of the Republic, a lot of the casualties that afflicted Imperial recruits were totally avoidable. They died in training mishaps, construction accidents, Grand Moff Tarkin secret experiments, and sometimes by the tip of Vader's red lightsaber, whenever the Sith Lord found himself in a fit of rage. And Headmaster Gentis had had enough. He was not just the headmaster of Raythal Academy, but a father too. And during Palpatine's short reign, he had lost almost all of his children in mishaps. Only a single son, Cole, remained. Headmaster Gentis decided that in order for the Empire and the children of the galaxy to survive, Palpatine needed to die. He orchestrated a coup and nearly killed Palpatine in the process, but ultimately the Sith Lord survived, of course. In their final confrontation in front of an entire hangar filled with Imperial cadets, Emperor Palpatine raised his hands and unleashed a massive arc of force lightning, reducing Headmaster Gentis to a giant black stain on the floor of the Durastil platform. This was one of my favorite comics to cover. If you want, you can check it out on the channel. I have links to it. It's from Darth Vader and the Ghost Prison. Number one, Tracta and Kadir's coup. Shortly before Grand Moff Tarkin ordered the destruction of Alderaan, a group of his peers, fellow Imperial Moffs, planned to murder both Sidious and his apprentice, Darth Vader. As we know, this wasn't the first time that Palpatine faced a coup, and the results were what you'd expect. Although outmanned, Vader managed to slice his way through the treasonous Imperial officers and stormtroopers that had betrayed the Empire on a distant world, far away from Coruscant. And in his throne room, Palpatine faced down the final moth of the secret coup, a young officer by the name of Kadir. This moth wasn't much of a challenge for a powerful Sith Lord. With a few bolts of Force Lightning, the Emperor was easily able to subdue his attacker. Palpatine kept him alive for a short while, hoping to see what type of threat Kadir's friends would present to Darth Vader. But as soon as Vader had defeated his opponents, Emperor Palpatine unleashed a final blast of Force Lightning, ending the coup attempt once and for all. I always love it when Palpatine just pulls out the big guns and goes unlimited power. If you guys haven't seen the deleted scene from Palpatine fighting Maul and Savage Oppress in the Clone Wars, it's like an unfinished version. I highly recommend you checking it out. There's some really cool scenes in there that they didn't put into the show, which would have been pretty fun. Anyways, let me know if there are some things that I left out, some perhaps fight scenes that you wanted me to add and I could make another video someday or just sound off in the comments and you all can discuss it. Thanks for watching today's video. Leave a like if you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always. Thank you.